Hello, welcome to Geek Up Play Studio. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a unique way to create a terrain. Before we begin to create our terrain, I want to show you this really cool material that was added in View 6. So let's create a cube. And this is a material you've probably already used. It's called Hypertexture. So we'll just load one, go through these, and look in here at volumetric, at these fantastic shapes. They're applying to the object in all three dimensions. And to make those kinds of materials, it's actually not that hard. You just go in here and create a volumetric material. And right here, we need to add one more tab. And to do this, we're going into Lighting, Model, and select Hypertexture. It's kind of hiding in here. And this will make a couple of materials for you. You'll see the main one. And you have a submaterial. So we'll select that material. And this is just like a normal material for now. And we can mix it. And we'll try that in the future. But one thing, it doesn't apply anything. So to do this, we need to go to step up to default color intensity, and we need to work with this intensity production. So if you then right click an edit function or double click, we have our density tab right here. So we'll just select one noise node now, and I want to reduce that scale a little bit. And you can see this is different. Let's render that to the screen. Just by adding that noise note in density, look at what we get. This worm-eaten, spongy-looking solid. And you can have a lot of fun playing around with that with colors and densities and image maps. But I want to show you what you can do when you apply this to the train. And one thing I found out with a train, and here's our simple one right click edit the object we can go in here to objects and I want to set these filters and we'll double time click on the line to add key points and adjust it just a plateau kind of looking train so what I've found out with our terrain when you want to make this tall and you increase it through this axis You know, in the train, you never get an overhang. They are always moving diagonally towards the top, never away from the top to make that overhang or middle layers of rock in a way. And that's a limitation of view. But with high protection, we can easily overcome that. So let's highlight our terrain. Go to Materials Edit. Go to Volumetric Lighting Model, select Hypertexture, and now let's go into our Density. And here we'll create two nodes. So let's put in our splitter. So we'll make a Noise node and a Fractal node. Let's connect them. So in the Fractal node, we'll just decrease the largest feature and we'll increase the roughness and gain so we'll have some rough edges here and the noise node will bring in our bigger kind of rocks and while we still have these smooth edges here so to fix this we need to go to the bumps tab edit function and while it's highlighted we'll just add the same, a little bit of roughness. And while we're here, let's delete this one and double time click on this. Let's load maybe a stone gray color. Click up and bring in a fractal node. We'll just add a little more variety in the colors. Okay. And if we look, now that edge has roughed out a bit. And then in our material and bumps, we can maybe make it a negative depth here. So there are a few bar bumps. 
just how you want to create it. And let's render this right now. So look how cool this is. You can add some roughness or smoothness where you want. But we have our mountain just being eaten out here and that kind of overhang. But don't worry that it's floating. We'll fix that in a second. We'll go right here and let's go to maybe edit this filter a little bit. We'll just add some key points in here and make it a little bit more rough on the rocks through that. And then we'll go into default and edit density and one way to increase the roughness here is to just add a node and add a multiplier to that. In the fractal node maybe we want to adjust these a little bit. There, so let's decrease the scale slightly to fit our mountain. And now you can see these interesting effects. A cave, um, some overhangs. And you know, I want to modify a few more things in here. Scale needs to come back up a bit. And in the noise node, decrease the scale, and then in the multiply filter, increase that a little. And overall density, you can also apply it right here. And if you go lower, you can see what happens, or higher. And we'll make this about 3.1. And let's increase the quality boost. And this will be our first layer. So we aren't going to have those rocks just hanging in the air like this. So now let's create another terrain and we'll just increase it here, make it bigger, make sure it's just slightly shorter than the previous one. Put it down in there. So what we've done we're creating a little bit of an underlay foundation so the rocks aren't just hanging in the air. They're kind of blending in and they're attached to the land here. Maybe that's not quite what we're looking for. We might need to increase the density here so it doesn't look so distorted. Let's increase the size of that underlying terrain a little bit more and maybe rotate this a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is just make a better composition in here. And one thing we don't need to do here is we don't need to have this on both materials in the mix, just on one. And there you go. That works out a lot better, I think. So it's just on one material. That's what was not working out there. So let's snuggle this in a little better. And we'll preview again. And here, now you can see how these cliffs are hanging off this mountain. We have some floating rocks still and we'll fix that. And this is what we we're talking about, that overhang of rocks. Now to fix those floating rocks, we can go in here and open our material editor. We'll select our material and click ecosystem. And you can add as many layers as you want to make this very complex. So let's go to the trees and you know what? This Sonerotia tree will work well for that. 
Let's increase our density, decrease the scaling, remove decay near foreign objects, and let's populate it now. Okay, and we'll just do the same for this underlying terrain as well. Let's create an ecosystem, plant, sonar, tea tree, increase the density, disable the decay near foreign objects because we have these two objects, trains merging, and if we did otherwise, the trees wouldn't populate it that much. And that's coming along pretty well. One thing we may want to do is increase the scale slightly on the trees to enhance that look a little bit. So now let's load an atmosphere and find something dark. No, that's a little too dark, so let's bring in something else. Sun rain, I think. And again, this is kind of, you need to go in here and play with the atmosphere and their presets to be sure that you get things looking the way you want. And we'll go into atmospheres in more detail in another tutorial. Okay, that's Getting about right, we want to increase the glow a little bit. And let's preview it one more time. Okay, and here's our test where you can see these rocks. And right here was the effect we were going for, these overhanging rocks or ledge. And you can see how the trees come through here and make it look kind of like a jungle. So let's just Fix the background, so we have our ground. Let's go into landscape and choose vegetation. And we maybe want to add one more mountain in the distance. Somewhere right there. So we have this kind of far away, maybe even a little farther just visible behind our right here. And let's add a cloud. And we'll move this cloud in closer to us. Scale it down. What I want to do, I want to place this cloud just right here, low to the ground. So I'll have this precipitation, and in the cloud settings, we maybe want to decrease this cover and density so it won't be that heavy. And let's now go to atmosphere, and maybe we want to increase our decay. Just some here in the fog, and let's make the light a little bit softer. Okay. I think we're almost done. Let's see what we have. So here's our final render. If you notice how this rock has some character, it has been through a few geological battles. And this is what our tutorial was about, using hypertextures. And in our first look at hypertextures, we've tried to use them in a different way with the terrain. Of course, you can add more details, more trees and plants, and make it more complex and a nice looking image, go ahead and experiment and make your own terrain or some other material with the hypertexture. Another interesting use of them is to create water splashes and waterfalls and we'll look at that in our next tutorial on hypertexture materials. Thank you for viewing this Geek at Play tutorial. For more tutorials, resources, and community, please visit us at www.geekatplay.com or www.vututorials.com.